Hello, and thank you for watching Get Togethers with Deidre. Welcome to my home, and I hope you enjoy all of the dishes that I will prepare for you today. One of the things about getting together with others is that it brings a lot of love and a lot of conversation and comfort. Food is very honest and true, and that's why I like to keep it simple with things that come from the ground and come from the trees. So follow me and stay tuned as I take you through my kitchen for the next get together. Get Togethers with Deidre. I'm Deidre, your host. Planning a get together requires more than just the food. It means planning your environment and the order in which things will flow. So what I've done in my small kitchen is use whatever space I have to create zones so that the flow will go as it needs to and people can serve themselves and I can enjoy my guests a lot better when they're able to serve themselves. So the first station that I've created is I've used a sofa table that is tall and has multiple shelves and I use it in order to be able to put my uh, place settings my serving trays and any bowls and glassware that I need and when I have it organized this way it's a reminder to me of what dishes that I've planned to cook and so I won't forget anything it helps create organization in my mind and the flow is much better and my guests they're able to have access to it as well so I hope you can use that little simple technique and make your next together, your next get together, a large and raving success. So it's all about having fun, and that's what we are attempting to try to do. Now I want to show you what it's like to prepare a table setting for your get together. This is a table in my dining room that I've prepared for two people. And for this get-together, it's myself and my husband. So I've used the flatware, which is a beautiful gold, black color, and it fits well with this gold black, with this gold tablecloth. It's just one that is very thin and shimmery, metallic, and it shows well in the day or in the evening. And I've chosen the rose theme and also red candles and the votive candles and I like these new electronic candles with the LED lighting and they're operated by battery and I put the candles the, into some glassware so that it shimmers and you can see the light flickering through. On the, ta on the napkins I used some twill, I just cut some strips of gold and then I used them to tie around to make the napkins have a little special flair to them and it goes along really well with the gold tablecloth. And I lit the candles and it's just creating a nice ambiance for us to have a get together as husband and wife. And I hope it'll be a great evening for him as well as myself. Preparing a get together it's best when you arrange various stations throughout your kitchen or your environment. The stations allow you to stay organized and allow for a self-sufficient occasion that your guests can serve themselves and you can relax a little bit more and enjoy your together time. Over here is what I created, a beverage station. I have the tea coffee maker and also juice, wine, ice water. I have it all here together so whatever they need or want is accessible. And first of all I'll start out by making a single cup of tea and that's what I really enjoy about this particular coffee maker. I just put the tea bag in there, slide it in. When I'm making my one cup of tea or multiple cups of tea I always begin by measuring using the cup that I'm going to use 
and filling it with water. So it gives me a kind of precise cup of tea or coffee. And then I just pour it right in there. And then I switch it over to one. I put the cup there. And within just a few minutes, we'll have a nice cup of tea. So I'm going to go ahead and prepare for making two cups of coffee because I know that my guest likes coffee and so do I. So we'll need two cups. So I first begin, it has a little thing here where I can put in a, a coffee filter. And I keep those right there. And I'm going to make some decaf coffee. For two cups of coffee, all I need is one heaping. You see how it's heaping over the spoon? And that's all I need for two cups. And it makes a pretty strong, real tasty cup of coffee. And so the cups that I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to put, it'll go, all go into this decanter. And I know that I'm going to use this coffee mug. So again, I'm going to fill this coffee mug up with water. It gives me the precise measurements that I need so I, I don't make too much or too little coffee. I pour it right in there. And I'm going to make two cups so I do the same thing again with the water. And Again, I pour it right in. And so the decanter will catch the coffee as it comes out. In the meantime, while I'm waiting for this one cup to finish, as you see, it's filling up that cup. Everybody tends to like to munch on chocolate. And nowadays they say that dark chocolate has some kind of health benefits. So, I have some German chocolate that my husband bought back from his trip to Germany. And I'm just going to break up a few pieces here in this, in this container that I have. Very nice looking package it is. I'll just break some of this up. And if, if we want to, we can dissolve or melt a piece or two of this chocolate inside the cup of coffee that we're going to have and it will add to the flavor and be very delicious. So I'm going to use these cups also. In order to have a little bit of citrus to add to my tea, I'm going to cut open a lime. And lime, mmm, I just enjoy that smell so much. And what I would like to do is use a strainer to um, capture the juice in case there's a seed or something in there. And I'll use this little ramekin. Well, I was able to get just a little bit of juice out of that line. The tea is complete and it's green tea and I do enjoy a little bit of lime in the green tea. So I put that in there. And I tend to use stevia, which is an organic sweetening product. And I'll put some of that in the tea to give me some of the sweetness that I enjoy. And I'll give it a little stir. And then I'm just going to taste it. I'll smell it. That's good, just like I like it. <laughs> it's nothing like a good cup of tea. So now that I have the, co I've switched over sides on the coffee maker here. I switched it to the side so that the coffee can begin to percolate. And very soon we'll have two cups of delicious coffee. In the meantime, my guests may enjoy a cup of cranberry juice 
I have the cups already prepared. So I'll just pour both of us a refreshing glass of cranberry juice. And look how beautiful that is. And let's just give it a taste. Mmm. That is so refreshing. Something so simple can be so good. Now, I want to put some non-dairy creamer into a bowl that makes it a little bit easier for my guests to add some cream to their coffee. So I'll put that in there. And so when the coffee is ready, all that's needed is to pour it into the cups, add some cream, maybe some more sugar, and then you can melt some of this delicious chocolate from Germany and have a satisfying beverage. Everybody enjoys wine these days, I hear. I don't drink anything but sweet wine. And let me show you what I mean. I enjoy this particular bottle of wine. It's called Moscata Diasti. And the Diasti means that it is a sparkling wine. And I love that crisp sparkling of wine. And it's the Moscata, it's made from grapes. And I enjoy that sweetness and the sparkle together. And I can drink it with any type of meat or vegetables. It doesn't matter. It's one of my favorites. So this corkscrew I'm using works great for removing the cork. And there you have it. A bottle of wine. For the two of us, I have these wine glasses. And I'll pour some This wine is good for any celebration or for drinking any time of the day or night. And so since I over poured on this one a little, I think I'll drink some of this myself. Mmm. Mm. A delicious glass of wine. And the hint of that chocolate that I just ate with it, it just gives more flavor on my tongue. I hope you enjoy this at your next gathering. Next, I want to talk about how great it is to have a tall glass of water. Putting ice into a glass. As you can tell, this is a big, big, tall glass. I like to fill it halfway with water. I mean with ice, and then fill the remainder with the water. I've already got the straws in there. I can share it with my partner. I'll drink from the green straw. And I'll save the red one for him. Water is great for digestion and should be a part of every meal and sharing it with someone in a one glass. It's kind of romantic. The coffee looks like it's ready. So I'm just going to make a cup and show you how delicious it can be. I'm going to pour the coffee into the mug. I'm going to add some of the nice flavored cream 
and as usual I like to add some of the stevia from the packet it has no calories and it's like an indulgence for me that I can splurge every day or throughout the day for a wonderful cup of coffee I love the look of the cream and I think I'm going to drop a piece of chocolate down there and let it dissolve so maybe by when I get closer to the bottom that chocolate will be melting and it'll be just like syrup very silky so now I think I'm ready to take a sip mm. that is so satisfying and comforting I tell you this is a great get together I'm having fun already Hello, and we're continuing with Get Togethers with Deidre. I'm Deidre Oda McKende. What I'm preparing for now is the entree for my guest, which is my husband. He just came back from Germany, and I wanted to have a nice dinner for him. So these are some of the dishes that I have prepared. This is corn that I've already taken the husk off, and I've rinsed it well to try to remove as much of the silk that I can possibly remove. This is very simple. Only two ingredients that I like to use. This is sweet whole basil. It kind of gets infused into the corn, into the crevices of it. I put a good bit on it the flavor so it can have an intense flavor whatever you don't get you can um, use it put it in some of your vegetables I'm going to be cooking some vegetables and I can use the overflow in some of my green beans this is thick cooked ba thick cut bacon And I'm going to take this bacon and wrap it, just wrap it, around the corn, just like that. See how simple that is? The flavor of the bacon when it starts to cook in the oven, which I will have already preheated the oven to 450 degrees. It will roast this bacon beautifully to where it's crispy and it will roast the corn as well and when you get finished you've got some really good seasoned corn and this corn seems like it's going to be very sweet I just bought it this morning fresh from the market and I think it'll be a nice addition to our meal so now that's ready just that quick to it's ready for the oven you see I preheated the oven to 450 and I'll just slide that in on the rack I'm going to add some water to these green beans because I want them to simmer some I like my green beans to taste like they've been cooked for a good bit so therefore I'm going to add the water and I'm going to add some Italian seasoning about a tablespoon this is dried herb seasoning and it adds a lovely flavor to green beans it has the oregano, the thyme in there and it just gives it a little good bit of flavor also I want to add some browning seasoning you can add this browning bouquet to just about any and everything and I just add maybe a tablespoon a teaspoon to that and the other thing I want to add to it is some tomato pesto 
I think a little bit of it just gives it an extra kick and it has um, nuts in it and it gives it just a delicious flavor and I hope you will enjoy it and try this recipe it's just so simple and so quick and rather than adding a lot of salt to your food try different seasonings such as this and see if you don't get some satisfaction I love to put garlic in all of my food because they say garlic is good for your heart and your, your blood system so I've added some garlic to it and if you don't mind I'm going to add a little bit of grapeseed oil the grapeseed oil will let it cook and then just a tad of butter not too much just a little and that butter helps the green beans glisten and of course butter always tastes good I wanted to check on the corn to see how it's doing in the oven and if you can see that corn is cooking up nicely and so is the bacon and the basil that I have added to it and the broccoli with the bell peppers of different colors I just want to add a little bit of garlic to those as well I just a little taste of butter And I know this may sound a little odd, but I like to use some of this Vidalia vinaigrette and add it to my vegetables. It gives the broccoli and the cauliflower and the bell peppers such a nice zing. And then I like to use some of the sweet peppers. I just add a few of them and a little bit of the juice and that adds to the vinaigrette taste kind of gives it a little Asian flair as well so just those two things I try not to add any water to uh, any salt to it and let just the seasoning from the dressing and the um, seasoning from the peppers give it just what it needs and broccoli and these bell peppers you pretty much can eat those without even cooking them but I like to cook them just briefly in order to heat them through and then they're ready and I can turn that off so that they don't overcook and we just kind of wait for the green beans to cook up and in the meantime I'm going to add a little bit of the grapeseed oil to the pan here and I'm going I've been marinating overnight some of these these are chuck steaks I marinated them really nice bring this over to the plate and the marinade makes it pop a little bit so be careful with that you don't want to burn your stuff but sometimes cooking there are some hazards <laughs> but try to get your meat in there and spread it out if they're having it marinated overnight, um, I think it's pretty tender. And it should brown nicely, but it's just going to take a while to let that cook up. And now that I've added some more pieces, I'll have to wait for the temperature to come back up. And let those steaks get nice and well done. 
I'm not one to leave my meat with red. I tend to like well done, and so does my partner. So I'm just going to let those cook. I'm not going to cover them because I like the brown that comes on the steaks when you don't cover them. I don't want them to steam. I just want them to kind of saute. In a little bit, I'll add a little bit of the butter that's melted here in the little plate here. And that butter is going to give it just even more flavor. And I will, at the end, add some garlic that I have remaining here. And I may add a little bit more seasoning to it. I did add some roasted garlic and herb seasoning. And I added some blackening um, seasoning to it. While my green beans are cooking, I like using some of these bacon chips. They say they're real bacon. I just add about a tablespoon of those into the mix. And it tends to give it that nice meaty flavor. And hopefully we'll be enjoying a delicious and complete meal in no time. Okay, now for your get together, we're at the station where we can prepare salads and fruit trays in order for the guests to enjoy. This station here, I've already prepped the strawberries. I've washed them and I've taken the red of the green leaves off of the strawberries and it turned into a very beautiful bowl of fruit. The ones that were bigger than a mouthful, I just sliced them right in half. I've already washed and prepared my cherry tomatoes and put them in a nice bowl. And also I've already washed and rinsed well my red seedless grapes. I have some red delicious apples that are ready. So what I'm going to do is just make a beautiful little platter that doesn't take any time at all. I have some celery here. Celery is supposed to be excellent for your blood pressure. That if you snack on celery all through the day, scientists have said that it will lower your blood pressure and your cholesterol as well. So I recommend anyone, young and old, include celery into your daily diet. The smell is magnificent. It has almost like a, a such a fresh licorice type of smell. And when you taste it, it tastes just as good. And so in order to make this platter that I can take and sit on the counter over there by the television, I'll just add a few handfuls of strawberries. To Red and greens tend to go together very well. I will put a cluster of strawberries right here on the edge. And see how that's beautiful already? I have some kitchen scissors that I use in the kitchen. And I like to just go in and clip some of them. So that when people grab them, they're just grabbing a small cluster like that. You see that? That's enough for one person to eat a cluster at a time instead of reaching in and grabbing the large big cluster that I had originally put on the plate. And that, um, by me going ahead and clipping these clusters, it makes it easier for the guests to serve themselves without having to figure out how they're going to break a cluster. Okay, so that's a nice set of strawberries there along with the green from the um, celery I grab a handful of these beautiful cherry tomatoes I like to eat them just like grapes and they say tomatoes are a fruit so that's why I like to include them in all of my fruit trays and I hope you will too so here we have it just that fast, in less than a minute, I've got a beautiful fruit tray that I can place anywhere around the house and any time of day that someone wants a snack to eat, 
they've got a beautiful plate that they can pick from. I want to show you one place that I usually put my fruit. It's a glass, a mirror tray, and it's such a beautiful tray. It's very simple but beautiful. And when you place your fruit on that tray, look how that comes out. So in your den area, you make a quick tray like this. You bring it to your den area, wherever your guests go, they've got something they can nibble on and snack on and enjoy. Your get together even more. I hope you'll try this at your next get together. It really will make a difference. Have fun. And one of the things that is very nice at any gathering is trail mix. I bought this trail mix because it said dark chocolate, fruit, and nuts. It's very clear about the ingredients and it lets me know that it's very natural and true to what it says it is and that's how we like to keep, eat fruit and vegetables and anything that's true and honest to what it says that it is. And I bought a different flavor of trail mix to add to that that has larger chunks of fruit. This has pineapple and bananas, apricots, and different things like that. When I fill that up, I just need a nice container to put it in. I use this glass one. And look at that, how beautiful and colorful. It didn't take me long to create yet another dish that I can place somewhere in the house for my guests to enjoy. The next thing I'd like to share with you is using sunflower seed kernels. Sunflower seeds contain a great deal of protein and you can snack on these day and night. They're like the best thing you can eat for protein and you know they have really no calories to mention and um, if you're watching your weight, sunflower seeds are the way to go. If you just set them around your house, reach in and pick a few up. The flavor is excellent. I enjoy sunflower seeds. And the trail mix, the sun-dried bananas, and the pineapple. It's delicious. Try them at your next event. You'll be glad you did. Now we're going to prepare a salad. A salad can go with any meal or you can make it a meal all in one. I bought these uh, cucumbers and during this season they are really really inexpensive and I like to use a spoon to just go in and scoop out some of the seeds on a cucumber that looks like this. It can get kind of messy if you're not careful, but it's worth uh, scooping them out. Like with anything that has seeds in them, you want to try to scoop them out because people don't like to eat seeds. And I just dice them up as thin as possible. And then if you like, you can even go down the middle of them and make the slices a little bit smaller, especially for those people that uh, like bite-sized food or don't like to eat things that are larger than their mouth can contain. I've already prepared and rinsed some lettuce. This is just the spring mix of lettuce. And I'll just take some of these cucumbers and just scatter them through there in this nice little oval bowl. And the next thing I want to do is to get an, a red onion prepared. Not a lot of onion, just a little bit to give it that fresh flavor. Red onion is said to be one of the greatest foods that contains a lot of um, calcium 
and vitamin B. And they said it's good in use for those who have cancer. And it helps to build your immunity, red onions in particular. So try to choose red onions next time if you don't already. And see how it adds just beautiful color and wonderful flavor to all of your dishes. You can saute them as well if you like, especially if you're one of those people that like your onions sauteed. I just slice them up really thinly and I go back in, turn it around, and slice it so that they're in nice little pieces and it kind of hides itself in the salad. And that's how sometimes I've been able to sort of trick my family into eating onions by make, dicing it up really small. And then I just kind of fluff the salad up. And the smell is very beautiful. It's not overwhelming at all. And then the next thing I like to do is to add some of the blue cheese crumbles. Blue cheese goes great with beef, which is the meat that we're using today. Blue cheese is delicious and it makes any salad taste like a meal. So, I hope you like the way that looks. If you're so inclined, sprinkling a few of the sunflower seeds on there adds even more protein to your salad. And if you're really brave, or you can let your guests decide if they want to do that, is to add some of your fruit mixture your trail mix into the salad with the nuts and the dried fruits. It makes it very, very delicious with whatever dessert uh, uh, dressing you decide to use. I use a raspberry vinaigrette and it's very delicious. Welcome back. This is Get Togethers with Deidre. We're at another station here where I am preparing different types of breads using various ingredients and some of the things that we've already made I'm going to include those in this flat bread roll-up. So what I have here is I'm using just some regular multi-grain flax seed flat bread and I've taken a piece out. I purchased some pimento cheese and it smells really, really good. Mm. I've tried it before and I really liked it. And it's a bargain for what I like to. It saves me the time of, of making the pimento cheese myself. So I use it as a base for a sandwich. I can eat it just with the pimento cheese alone. But what I want to do today is to show you how including some other ingredients can make it really really special as well. So I get that just spread it out really good on there and I bought some turkey and I just lay one piece here and then put another slice there just like that. I like Roma tomatoes I keep those all the time because I like tomatoes for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. <laughs> you may be the same way. But I'm just chopping these tomatoes up like this and then turning them the other way. I cut them up really good so that they can spread out. And when you take a bite, they're, you know, in pieces. And so you're not getting one big piece all at the same time. And so I just spread those out, distribute them throughout. And then this salad that we just made with the blue cheese and the fruit, I just take a handful of that and just kind of lay it out on there just like that, really nice. So you're going to use some of your muscle. Just begin to roll it like that, kind of pulling in what you've put in there. Roll it up. It's going to make a big roll up for you. And this would make great party food, a great lunch, a great breakfast. And I sort of just slice it on the diagonal. See that? 
and boy would you look at that sandwich just that quick you've got a beautiful sandwich roll up it's so full that it's that some of the tomatoes and different things are falling out but that's beautiful that's delicious I could eat that all day and night it's nothing like good food it's honest it's true it's comforting you know exactly what you're getting there's no question about it fixing and preparing your own food is the way to go I hope you'll try this flatbread sandwich it didn't take me 30 seconds to put it together because I've already was prepared with some of my other ingredients and if you want to complete the tray just go ahead and add a cluster of fruit a fruit a few of the strawberries I will put some as many or as little as you like mix some up with your and add a few more tomatoes if you like and if you want some more greenery just add some of your salad you've got a complete meal there and you're gonna get full off of it I guarantee you enjoy at the dessert station I have prepared to make it very simple and easy I purchased some cookies and some pound cake I purchased some cookies these are oatmeal cookies with cranberries and I know that my guest loves coconut I mean oatmeal cookies my guest really enjoys oatmeal cookies so in order to satisfy his taste for oatmeal cookies I'm going to use them to create a very simple dish of using honey mixed with Cool Whip as my base and I just used a tablespoon it doesn't take a lot because Cool Whip is already sweet but the honey adds just another note of flavor so I will just spoon that into one of my dishes this is a beautiful glass dish I put it in there just like that mm -mm. and then I'm going to use some of these berries I'll use the knife to just sort of flake a few of the berries over in there just like that they're blackberries, strawberries, raspberries blueberries they're naturally sweet and I'll just add a couple of cookies just right in the mix there one like that and one like that and there you have it a fruit and cookie parfait with Cool Whip that's been sweetened with honey what an awesome dessert very light very refreshing and leaves a very flavorful taste on your palate for the next dessert I know that my guest enjoys plain pound cake so in order to appeal to his taste I'm just trying to give him what he likes and hopefully he'll enjoy the meal and remember it as a special occasion that we have shared together I'm going to break up some of this pound cake inside of the dish just like that with my fingers and that cake is so moist my goodness and I'm going to use some of the same honey whipped cream and topple some on top there Boy, that looks good. My mouth is watering. <laughs> I have some of the dark chocolate that we had at the beverage station that I'm going to use. And I'm going to just chop up a few pieces there on this board here. And 
just that quick. I have chocolate crumbles to put on top. And that is a beautiful looking dessert as far as I'm concerned. There's not that many ingredients and it's beautiful looking. And I believe that he will enjoy that as well. I like to give him a couple of options and hopefully he will enjoy it immensely. One of the other desserts that I want to show you is one that I enjoy and that's using Greek vanilla yogurt. This Greek vanilla yogurt, you purchase it in the store. I, since it's already flavored with vanilla, I don't do anything. I just stir it around really good and then put some in a bowl. And because I always keep berries around, I just flake some of the berries over into it. And look at that, how beautiful. And some of the juice from the berries are, is already starting to macerate on its own. So you've got yogurts and yogurt with berries. Mm -mm. That's called licking a spoon. Mm -mm. That's it. delicious. So I hope you will try some of these very simple, simple desserts for your next get-together. And I promise you'll be happy and so will your guests. Mmm, this is good. Very tasty. Mm.